Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Sarah Godin and together we go through how to design and structure a program in DHIS2. All right, so I'm here with Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, and uh, we're going to be going through the beginning of three videos where we look about uh, tracker capture and or tracker and event capture. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, in this video, we want to look at designing or structuring a program, whether that's a program with, with registration or without registration, whether it has multiple stages and all this sort of thing. So I guess we can, we can spend a few sentences talking about the decision between one or the other, and then let's mm -hmm. look about how to actually plan it out when we're doing it. For sure. So I like that in the lessons, Nicholas, you, for each of them, you have a good description of the difference. So when you would choose to design an event versus when you choose to design uh, a tracker capture program. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be tracking a person um, or a thing through a series of events or through a program that has many stages, but you always need to come back to that one person or that thing, they're considered a, a tracked entity, so you'd want to use the tracker capture. If you're going to do a one-time event or an event that can be repeated, but you're not, you don't need a person to be registered. A good example for this is, um, say you host a, a workshop and you just want to know who showed up on that one day. You could set up uh, an attendance for this workshop and it would be an event. Mm -hmm. And in the example that we have, uh, let's go down to that. The example that we have was for a school counselor visit. You might not want to keep track of who actually was at the school counselor due to due to privacy issues, mm -hmm. but you might want to know why they visited and the age or the grade the student was in. Mm -hmm. So you can keep track of things um, as much as you want, but the individual uh, entries are pretty much isolated. There's no connecting tissue between, uh, you can't tell uh, who came back more than once or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's anonymous. Right. So what's different about the tracker capture? Maybe we can start here. So this example here, we've created a teacher training program and what we're tracking is teachers. So we've called them school staff, but it could be teachers or administrators. Um, something that's unique about the tracker capture is what are you collecting about the people when you register them into the program? So that's one of the first things that we have to set up. So you'll probably know already what you need to know about your person, your patient, your teacher, um, in this case, we've picked name, gender, and telephone number. So when you are registering a person, once your program's been set up, you'll want to enter in their name, gender, and telephone as kind of the first step. So you'll notice the event didn't have attributes because you're not tracking people. Yeah. Right. So both have a program name. This one's pretty standard. Um, once we get into the following uh, assignments, you'll go through this step uh, right after you set up attributes. And then for assigning to org unit roles, this assumes we've done things in the logical way and that we already have our uh, org unit structure set up. So this is more for our personal notes because after we set up the program in DHIS2, we'll go through manually and we'll say this teacher training program is going to be uh, relevant for these particular org units. So um, this is again just kind of a, to help you design. Mm -hmm. Just to think it out. Mm -hmm. And and with with a with a tracker program we can have one or more data entry forms or equivalents. And that's what we would call the, the program stage, yeah? So you want to explain a little bit about what those are like? Sure. So uh, in this example, we have teacher training as a program, but it, it contains a couple of different um, events or f let's just say things. So one of the things that we want to capture in teacher training is we're going to have workshops. So we want to create a one program that's still, it's like a sub-program almost, we call it a program stage, and it has its own uh, data elements. We can create our own uh, data entry screen for just this stage, so you can really customize um, the experience for the stages. But the person, the school staff, once they're registered, they're going to be available, or they're, um, they will be able to participate in this stage, this stage, you can define your stages to have um, certain time periods. So say, for example, 
after you register some after you register someone you could say this stage will start right away or this stage will will start two two days after so there's a lot of timing and scheduling that you can set up um, as to how your program is going to be laid out in this case our example we only have two stages and if you notice for the event it's just there's no stage it is the event that that is right. what you're capturing yeah and we can repeat one stage right so if all we wanted to do was this workshop stage we could just have that kind of repeat. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you set a stage to be a recurring, um, you could do it over and over again. So in this example, uh, we have different topics for each workshop. So every teacher will go through the program stage, you know, maybe five times, um, but pick a different topic each time. Cool. Mm -hmm. And in this one, for example, the assessment, it's a pretty straightforward. Basically, once they've gone through the workshop, and then they've had a few months to put their skills into action. Someone's going to come back and do a quick assessment and say, like, yes, they've demonstrated this new technique. So this particular program stage is really just like a one-question survey that someone will come in and fill out uh, after. Right. Well, I think that's good. I mean, that, that, that example, I think, gives enough of an idea of, uh, as you can see, we, we offer an Excel uh, document there on mm -hmm. the page, but you can also just use a table similar to this on mm -hmm. your own if you'd like just so that how you kind of plan out your tracker uh, program because there are a lot of different steps involved and everything connects and especially I know from my experience when first coming up on all these different terminologies like entities and attributes and stages uh, I couldn't really connect which was which and how they connected so in this way it's just the idea of kind of going from left to right from the, the, what you're going to have to start with and then going towards data elements. So I think uh, people should be able to either recreate this or, or fill out your own based mm -hmm. on this um, template. And then in the next videos, we'll look at going into the system and how to, uh, how to actually create those steps. Absolutely. This will be the fun part. So I think this is a good start. And uh, so once you've designed, please join us for the next two videos where we'll talk about tracker capture and event capture setup. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical Outcomes.